Wow, Marlon, there's, a, Marlon, there's a Marlon. Marlon, right here. Right here. That's what those arts are. Quick, what do you got to pitch at it? I've got nothing to pitch There, there's a hard body there. He's chasing. There's a. Oh my god. Is it still here? Yeah, it's just here. It's right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fully lit. It's a little black, eh? Oh, it's a big black. Fully lit. Fully lit. It's fully lit. Oh, dude, look at this. I know. Look at this. Oh. He wants an electric man. He's, that's what he's doing. Yeah, he's buzzing the electric. Bill Fish is on the salty scrolls. We haven't exactly got the right gear to catch one. Randy chasing billfish in the Gulf of Carpentarian. We usually like to chase the billfish when the light's a little bit higher. At the moment though, we're really just trying to scope out the lay of the land and, or the sea I should say, and find where the most pelagic activity is happening. There's plenty of bird life, baits getting smashed everywhere. It's a great chance for us to try and see if we can catch the long tail of northern bluefin tuna. It's a species that really has eluded us this trip. We want to catch one. Because uh, Nico's got a sneaky little recipe he wants to show me later on. So the task is there. It's not just a sailfish today, it's all about a long tail tuna at the same time, and there's a bunch of them busting up over there. Eat it, eat it, got him. Got him. Got him. Oh, you just pulled the hook on him, and it was a longie. Oh, no way! Oh, how good's that? Oh, I missed him too. Oh, go oh. again, go again, go again. <laughs> it's all happening on the front deck. We've got aerial Spaniards. This could be the long tail, which has eluded us so far, Nico. It has. I'm going to back back on yourself being for a long tail. Oh, it's a Mac tuna. Every day of the week. It is a Mac tuna. No. Very disappointed. Which means we're gonna keep a long tail. Are still eluding us. <laughs> I tell you what, how cool is that mackerel jump? <laughs> oh, so good. And so often, like you just find the bait, the predators are there, and there's a line of them. There's yeah. not just one. There was long tails, mac tuna, and Spaniards. Some, something we've been discussing is rather than throwing the small slugs into the schools, let's start throwing a bigger sticky in there and see if we can't coach something else out. And often the long tails will eat the bigger sticky, but uh, in this case. Spanish, Spanish wanted to race it. And that was very cool to watch. And the other thing you sometimes find around these packs is... Yes, the little stick faces. Sails and sometimes other billfish. So it's all happening here. We're in the right spot. And I think we keep working and I reckon the day could start to get a little bit lively. I right, we better get the teaser out. It's getting close. Okay, coming in. Nope, he's gone. <laughs> The tuna schools continued to remain active, but we couldn't tempt a long-tailed tuna, and as the sun got higher, it was time to start chasing a sailfish. It's a little bit rudimentary. There's a bit of MacGyver engineering going on in the back. It has to do with the fact that we don't have outriggers on this vessel. It'd be nice to have outriggers because we want to put our teasers when we're trolling for sailfish or billfish out in that clean water. Don't have that, so we've got the next best thing. We're putting the gaff to another purpose, being attached in not so attractive fashion to the back of the boat. We'll put our teaser out on the outskirts of the gaff, hopefully put it into some clean water, and hopefully attract the attention of sailfish. Hope we don't need the gaff. <laughs> we don't use the gaff from now. Perfect. I like that. the sailfish begins. We've got a teaser in action, we've got a skirt sitting behind that. Way out the back we've got the skipping gar, we've got a little pusher in action as well. What we do now, we're going to go and look for signs of pelagic activity, some tuna busting up. We're going to go and circle those and hopefully find one of these local billfish. Chasing billfish is a game of patience and we troll likely looking ground trying to find one of these elusive fish. We continue trolling but we can't raise or find any type of billfish. While cruising, the sounder has shown plenty of life on the bottom, and being that we don't have dinner sorted, we decide we really have to drop a bait down to some of these shows. God, oh, shark. 
Oh, it's got Queenie to lay up. I just pulled the hooks on it, that's all I did. Eh? I think I just pulled the hooks on it. Pulled the hooks and then got and then got a Queenie on the way up or a Trevor. Well, good luck with that. Then pulled your sinker back up the main line. Yeah, mate. I wanted a little bit of Andy in a second, Nodge. You want Andy, do you? You're right. Yep. And it's got very sharp tail scoots, that one's. It's a brassy Trevally, that one, Nodge. They fight just as hard as their giant Trevally cousins. They're very closely related to them because they look very similar, but it's just a bit longer, yeah? Yeah, and they've got the little yellow tinges on their fins. Yep. And um, pound for pound, I'm probably glad they don't grow as big as giant Trevally, but they are a very cool fish nevertheless. And another species. Another species. The first one we've seen. It is. On the west. Yeah. Hmm. Out here we run two of the most basic bait rigs. I'm going to quickly explain to you where and why we'd use them. One is the running ball sinker rig, which we use when our sounder tells us the fish are holding tight to the bottom. And the sounder gives us a lot of really valuable information on what rig to use and when to use it. If your fish are tight on the bottom, running ball sinker rig. If the fish are up off the bottom, your sounder will also explain that to you. And by looking at that, you go to your dropper rig. That'll determine the length of your dropper as to how far off the bottom they are. A nice big loop. Get your bait swimming freely. Sinker weight will be determined on how much run. Anchor yourself to the bottom and you're gonna be with a great shot at catching one of those trophy fish. Just preparing baits at the moment to drop to the bottom. There's a variety of different reef species that call this place home. And when we're cutting up baits, we're looking at different size baits and also the way they'll present in the water. Triangular strips, really long and thin. And when we hook them up, we're pinning them into that top square basically the thickest part of the bait, and that allows it to down, when it's down there on the bottom, basically get a bit of that current and start drifting around very naturally, whether it's on a ball sinker rig on the bottom or up on a paternoster, it's gonna present well, and that's often the key to just getting those better fish to bite. Here's a bite, here's a bite, here's a bite. It feels like a shark bite. Get it, now? Hey. Uh-oh. Doesn't look good. Hey. Doesn't feel like a shark though, eh? I'm gonna have to go this way. Oh. Hey, Nico! What you got, mate? I got something very cool. Something cool? It's a catfish. Huh. But it's a good catfish. <laughs> it's one of them. It's a golden cobbler, mate. The speedy catfish. I'll tell you what, we have. You, you wanna give me just a little bit of a hand? You hold that. Oh, I can hold that. I was gonna get up, but I thought you had it under control. Oh. He's a good one too. Ah, oh, the golden cobbler. And Nico, we don't normally like catfish, but on our last excursion to the Gulf, we heard these eat well, and we thought, we're gonna give one a go. We did. And how good was it? Well, we compared it to Tuskies and Finger Mark, all cooked in the same pan, same time, same crumbs. Taste the difference, I'll tell you what. Three great eating fish right there. Next level, and this one, unfortunately, mate, for you, you're going to dinner as well. And unfortunately, and you're doing the filleting. Uh, you fill, I filled the last yeah, you one. You didn't, mate. I'm sure I did. No, you didn't, and you touched it already, so I don't want to. <laughs> up to you. Right. So I'm filleting. <laughs> Looks like Nico's eating. <laughs> he, he agrees too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a fish. Yes. Good, 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 good. Go, matey. Go, go, go. That's a good fish. That's a, yeah, good one. Right, I'm coming up. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, you're winning. You're not talking, which means we're in trouble, aren't we? Oh, I think I got in trouble just then. Shark. All right, that was a big tusky. Oh, the sharks. They just, oh yeah. Oh. Yep, that's those big archers that came through then. What do you got? Cod? Cod? Shark? Cod? Oh wow, marlin, there's, a, there's a marlin. Marlin, right here. Right here. That's what those archers are. What do you got to pitch at it? I've got nothing to pitch. There, there's a hard body there. He's chasing, there's a... Oh my god. Is it still here? Yeah, it's just here, it's right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fully lit. It's a little black, eh? Oh, it's a big black. Fully lit. Fully lit. It's fully lit. Oh, dude, look at this. I oh, know. Look at this. Oh. 
He wants an electric man. He's, that's what he's doing. Yeah, he he's buzzing electric. Got rid of your shark yet? Oh, oh, I just popped off. The billfish is on the salty scrolls. We haven't exactly got the right gear to catch one. It's Murphy's law that as soon as you stop trying to catch a fish and are completely unprepared, they show up and make fun of you. This marlin has raised our spirits that maybe we can catch one here and we are quickly back controlling a lure. I bet it's a Spanish. Good, good release. See you Spanish. Goodbye Spanish. We are now back in search mode, desperately trolling to try and raise this marlin again and hoping that the local bycatch of mackerel and queenfish won't get in our way. I just big queenie on this. Think so? Yeah. Hey, oh, we wanted Nico. It's always a way when we're bill fishing and we are fishing on a bit of a hunch today. We troll and troll and see plenty of surface activity but cannot raise a billfish. We ticked a lot from our salty scrolls, but as is often the case when fishing, we couldn't quite catch everything we set out for. Come on. Oh. But the beauty of this passion is that tomorrow, we will most likely start planning another mission, where great mates get to travel to dream destinations in search of other fish, more lessons and adventures to be had, and all that comes with being on the road and outdoors in this beautiful country of ours.